What's going on, you guys? It is your boy Jess Almeida here on YouTube and on Beantown Taste, back again with another video. So I've been getting a lot of comments recently on the new Beantown Taste logo, and people have been absolutely loving the new logo recently. I am going to let you guys know where I got that logo from because there's been a few people that have been asking where I got that logo from. So I know somebody who does like a hobby in graphic designing and all of that. Her name is Nikki Ross, but she made a new Instagram called Outlet underscore N dot R. Her link will be in the description down below if you guys need anything for your websites or your social medias or your businesses or anything like that. Go hit her up. Go check her out. Tell her that your boy Jesse sent you here. And also, I just want to say thank you very much for the logo. The logo came out absolutely phenomenal. We needed the change on the website, and you provided us with the change. And I do appreciate your hard work at the end of the day, and it came out phenomenal. And without further ado, let's hop straight in this video. This is ridiculous. Call for personal foul. That was absolutely ridiculous. Austin Bruins have won the Stanley Cup. On down. Here comes a one-two pitch. Red Sox win the World Series. I don't know. It's tough. I, Tom, Tom's up there, man. What is going on, YouTube? Welcome to episode 23 of the Bean Town Taste podcast. What is up, everybody? It's your boy Jesse Almeida here, back on YouTube and back on Bean Town Taste for another podcast. This is podcast number 23 we are recording here on the channel and on the website. Now, we got three teams to cover. In terms of the Bruins, for sure, that I'm going to mention, I'm going to mention playoff tickets because, obviously, as you guys probably can guess, the Bruins have already clinched the playoffs. So, that means playoff tickets have already gone on sale. We're going to be addressing that issue also, and then we're going to also address the Celtics, who have been blowing leads as of recently and not showing up for opponents who they think is going to be a walk in the park. All that's going to be addressed today in this podcast. Alongside with that, we are live here on stream, so we'll be answering any of you guys' questions in the comments section as well from this live stream, and this will be going up on YouTube as well, so people on my live stream... Ask questions away as we are going along in the podcast. Leave a thumbs up if you guys enjoyed these videos. Subscribe now if you guys are new. You guys know what to do. Go check out our website. Links in the description down below. And I was going to start off Celtics. But let's start off Bruins because I have to really address Ticketmaster and all these secondhand stub websites. It's absolutely ridiculous and it's absolutely bullcrap of what they are doing to fans. So if you guys can obviously guess, and if you can't guess it, then you're living under a rock. That's all I can say. The Boston Bruins have already clinched a playoff spot for the 2023 playoffs. Right. Absolutely crazy, an absolutely historic season for the Boston Bruins. And when the Boston Bruins clinched the playoffs, you know what that means for your boy here. That means tickets go on sale. I'm super excited to get to the postseason. I'm ready to buy tickets for the playoffs and all that for this deep run. And I go on Ticketmaster because your boy got a pre-sale code. From the Boston Bruins themselves, because I do so much business with them, as you guys can tell from this channel. I get pre-sale codes to be one of the first ones to buy tickets and all of that. And I go on there on Saturday, excuse me, Sunday I go on there, right? Because they clinched it Saturday night. I go on Ticketmaster, I punch in my code to get my... Tickets, right? I'm thinking I'm getting Bruins tickets at face value. I'm so I was I was ready to go ballistic on tickets because your boy's been saving up. Your boy has been saving up some money on tickets. And I get there, right? I get on Ticketmaster, right? I punch in my code and I get into like the map when you get to go buy tickets and all that, right? Guess what popped up? Guess what popped up when I went to go find tickets oh you can't guess it you can't guess it no tickets at all not a single ticket on there and i went on there right 
they told us to be on the pre-sale by like 11 a.m. One, I was on there pretty much right on the dot. Right on the dot. All of them gone. All of the tickets are gone. I'm sitting there. I'm like, what the heck is going on? What, what do you mean there's no tickets left? How are there no tickets left? I'm like one of the first people on here. I was ready to load up on the first round, the second round, and the finals. I was ready to load up. I was like, oh man, I'm going to get this for the cheapest of cheap. I'm going to get them now and be set and good to go afterwards. Nope. What's that Draymond Green meme? Nope. Nope. Did not happen. And I was angry. Then they go on sale to the public at 3 o'clock, right? And I just think, hey, just for shits and gigs, right? Let me see if there's any tickets that pop up right now. Oh, yeah, tickets popped up. You know how much they popped up for? They popped up for $750 each. This is round one, by the way. Hold up. Wait a minute. Something ain't right. And I just roll my eyes, and I think to myself, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? I waited all this time just to get sent to the second-hand market like that. I didn't even see any face value tickets at all. Not a single face value ticket. And I was just like, wow. Ticketmaster, you've done it again. First was Taylor Swift. Now it's sporting events that I go to. Really? Wow. Like, I really hate Ticketmaster. I hate Ticketmaster. I hate StubHub. I hate Vivid. I hate all of those guys. I don't hate Ace Ticket as much because at least when you're buying tickets from Ace, you're getting money back towards a future purchase, and you can, if you save enough points, you can get a free game out of it. So, at least in terms of them, you kind of get something out of buying from the secondhand market. But on Ticketmaster, StubHub, you're not getting anything. I remember back in 2011, right? 2011. It cost. My dad and I, well, I didn't buy the tickets because I was like 12 years old at the time. It cost him $400 per, per ticket, $400 per ticket to go to game three of the Stanley Cup finals. Nowadays, game one of the first round is 350 for nosebleed. Make it make sense. And mind you, the $400 per ticket for that Stanley Cup game that I went to in 2011 was Loge. That was Loge Box. Then, I got a better one for you. I got a better one for you. Game 7 in 2013 against the Toronto Maple Leafs. Arguably one of the greatest games in Bruins history. Sat loads again. You know how much my dad paid for that ticket? $200 per ticket. Meanwhile, meanwhile, first round game one of this year's playoffs is going for almost four hundred dollars really and you're not even counting the fees yet on top of that something needs to be done something needs to be changed i don't know if taylor swift's taking Ticketmaster and them to court and all that because they dropped the ball in terms of her concerts but i hope that somebody does something in terms of Ticketmaster and all that because Something needs to be done. They're keeping the real fans out of the stadiums. It's not right. It's not right at the end of the day. Or if you're going to spend that much money. Earn some like points towards future purchases or something like that. 
Because if we're not even going to get a chance to get tickets at face value, some people may not be able to ever see a game ever. At this rate, people may never get the chance to see a sporting event or concert. And it's sad. It's sad at the end of the day. Something needs to be done. Even if they can't give you... Even if they can't charge you fees, like, for the secondhand stubs, right? Hey, that's kind of worth it at the end of the day. Because you're not, they're not tacking on $60 per ticket fees or whatever. And jacking up the price even more there. Couldn't even tell you how much the fees are for the cheapest ticket for the Bruins right now. I didn't even check because I was so disgusted with it. But anyways, let's talk about the Bruins themselves. Let's talk about the Bruins themselves because... I could go on for hours in terms of that topic. The Bruins in the playoffs, the fastest team ever to 50 wins. Obviously on a historic pace. Bruins in the playoffs, I think it's safe to say that they're going to have home ice advantage throughout the entire playoffs. We haven't talked trade deadline at all. We haven't talked trade deadline at all. So let me get my thoughts on the trade deadline for the Boston Bruins. So the Boston Bruins got... Dmitry Orlov, they got Garnett Hathaway, and they got Tyler Bertuzzi. By the way, all fantastic moves, by the way. I love every single one of those players. Tyler Bertuzzi, underrated. I would say he's a 26 goal scorer, 28 assists when healthy, so that's around like 50 something points around there. Very solid second line. Winger or third line winger, whatever you want to say. Garnett Hathaway, six foot three. Fourth line right winger, an absolute monster. Physical as hell. Something that you can always use on the back end of your roster in terms of depth. And then Dmitry Orlov. Man, I really didn't think that the defense could not get much better in terms of the Bruins. But man, it got so much better. I couldn't believe how better the Bruins defense got. Dmitry Orlov. Oh yeah, definitely right now, Don Sweeney, if you're watching this video some somehow, which obviously you are not, re-sign him. Re-sign him. You gotta if you have a core of Grizzlick, which I don't know if he's a free agent after this year, I'm just talking out of my head. Grizzlick McAvoy. Lindholm, Orlov, Forbort, Clifton. Whoo! That is tough. That is tough at the end of the day. Good luck to any team trying to match up with that defense or trying to get a shot on that defense there. Because, man, huh, you're going to have some rough times for sure. Now, let's talk about Bertuzzi a little bit. Bertuzzi's interesting. I believe he's a free agent after this year. Also, you gave up a first-round pick for him. I think it's next year's first-round pick that you gave up. Orlov, I think you gave up this year's first-round pick. And then, like, a second round in 2025. And then a third round next year. Giving up, They're giving up picks. The Bruins are giving up some picks. It's very interesting. And the reason why it's interesting is because are they getting players now to back up possibly losing Krejci and Bergeron at some point? Maybe? I don't know. The Bruins are looking good for the next, what I say in one of the videos, four or five seasons if they keep going at this rate. Because in my opinion, they've pushed all the right buttons so far. So, in my opinion, Bruins, keep it up. Keep up the energy. Keep up the pace. Keep making the right moves. I feel like the only thing that you will have to worry about in the future, obviously, will be that first line center and that second line center. But, honestly, the Bruins, they also have Pavel Zaka lined up for the future. So, you could have a second line center right there if Krejci retires. If Bergeron retires, that's going to be a hit for sure. But, I feel like... If you lock up some guys now and you make the right moves and maneuver some stuff, obviously, you could probably find a first-line center somewhere. 
even if you do, like, let's say if, if they have to move Zaka to the first line, right? If they have to move Zaka to the first line and they have to find a second line center, I think, I would think that they could do that for sure. But at the end of the day, we won't know. I feel like Bergeron at least, at least Bergeron, I don't know what Krejci's future is looking like. I would say definitely Bergeron at least. I think he's got at least a couple more seasons ahead of him. Who knows? Let's hope he's got at least two more seasons ahead of him. But if they win a Stanley Cup final this year, he's retiring for sure. 100% he's retiring at the end of the day. And where would they go after Bergeron? Who knows? But we will worry about it when that happens. The Bruins are looking like the best team in hockey for sure. They are going to be one of the better teams in hockey for the next, I will say at least three years. But in my honest opinion, I say four seasons. So, all we got for the Bruins next up will be the Celtics because here's something you're going to hear from me that I haven't done for a while. As of right now, not so good for the Celtics, honestly. Well, I've been a fan of Boston Celtics for, uh, you know, my whole life pretty much. The first Celtics team was back when I was like seven. The Boston Celtics became legendary. Alright, so as the recording of this, it's March 13th, 2023. The Boston Celtics are currently playing the Houston Rockets. Last team in the Western Conference. The last team. And guess what, guys? They're currently losing 85 to 82. Why are they losing to teams and getting back to old habits? Oh, it's 87 82. But you know why? They're losing games or losing leads and all that. The reasoning for that is because they underestimate their po opponents. They just chuck up from three. They dribble the ball, iso ball, instead of ball moving and all that. You know when they were on timeout in terms of here on the channel? They, when I said they were on timeout because they weren't playing good basketball, they weren't playing fluent style of basketball. This is why they're on timeout right here. Because of the reason that they're playing right now. It has a flick in their brains. And they have to be like, okay, let's not get away from our goal here. We're, the goal is Banner 18. The goal is to get back in the NBA Finals. We can't screw this up. If we screw this up, it's a massive disappointment for us this season. And there's one guy in particular. I hate pinpointing guys. I really do hate it. But... It really just seems like the energy of the locker room changed. And I feel like this guy maybe has something to do with it. That's Grant Williams. Obviously, as we know, Grant Williams has been seeking a $20 million a year contract. Obviously, for four seasons or five seasons, whatever he can sign. He wants $20 million a year. But in terms of his stats for the season... He just simply hasn't played to that ability. He just simply ha is not worth $20 million a season. A guy who's getting paid $20 million a season doesn't miss two free throws in a row in crunch time. Williams this season, who wants $20 million, mind you, $20 million a season, has played 65 games, all right? 8.4 points per game, 4.8 rebounds per game, 1.8 assists per game. And you're like, alright, those are just simple stats, whatever. So let's take a look at his uh, shooting. Grant Williams from the field, 45% from the field. It's alright, it's not bad. It's not great, but it's alright. Grant Williams from the three-point line, 40.4% from the field. I'm going to take a look at Grant Williams' stats from last year. And I'll compare you his stats from last season versus this season. So last year, right? Last year, Grant Williams had 7.8 points per game. This year is 8.4 points per game. So he's upgraded there. Grant Williams had one assist per game last year. But this year he has 1.8 assists per game. Good. Good. Last year he had 3.6 rebounds per game. This year it's 4.8. But here's where the numbers, for me at least, say he's not worth the 
$20 million that he's asking for. Last year, Williams had a .7 blocks per game. This year is .4. Alright. He's 6 for 7. He doesn't block that many shots. So, alright. No big deal. Not going to really look into it that much. Last year from the free throw line, he shot 90% from the free throw line. 91% if you round it up. This year from the free throw line, shooting 80%. That's a 10% decrease. Last year from the three-point line, he shot 41.1% from three. This year, he's shooting 40% from three. That is a 1% decrease. Last year from the field, he shot 47.5% from the field. This year, 45.5% from the field. Last year, he played 24.4 minutes per game. Alright? This year, he's played 27 minutes per game. So, he's played more minutes this season, right? He's played more minutes this season. But his numbers have either gradually increased, not by much, or they've decreased. Like, for example, the points per game has slightly increased. Not as much as you would have hoped for it to be. Like, for 28 minutes, per, pretty much 27, 28 minutes per game, I would at least hope for you to be in double figures of points per game if you want 20 million a year. He's getting 27 minutes coming off the bench. Obviously, recently he's had some DNPs or whatever, right? So that's going to factor in a little bit with the minutes. But I'd say for the majority, he's had a good 28 minutes per game. So he's getting, so he was getting around three, four extra minutes per game, and the shooting's gone down. He's only scored 0. .6 more points per game. He's averaging a, a rebound more per game. That's good. And also, he, but here's the thing too. He's averaging more turnovers. So, you can make your assessment there on whether or not he's worth the $20 million a year. But if your shooting is going down, oh yeah, we have the game in the bag, so on and so forth. We don't have to try as much. No, that's not the case. You play hard for all 48 minutes in the game. All 48 minutes in the game, you have to keep going. And for some reason, the Celtics have been like, alright, we're just going to coast ride this. Acting like they don't really need the first seed or whatever, but having the first seed in the playoffs, as I just mentioned in the Bruins segment, is crucial. Because that means it runs through you. The postseason runs through you. You are the leader. You are the one that is controlling the postseason. Is that an advantage? Absolutely it's an advantage. But at the end of the day, there's no way you should be blowing 28-point leads. I get a 14-point lead here and there. I understand that. But when you are facing teams, right? And you are supposed to be the best team in the NBA. As I've been calling you, you should not be blowing 28-point leads. You should not be blowing 18-point leads. Like, I get it. In terms of the three points, three pointer, and all that, that's nothing anymore. An 18 point lead, I guess, is nothing, but sometimes they lose that lead in a snap of the fingers. I don't understand it. Where's the hustle? Where is the integrity? Where's the commitment? Sometimes we don't see it. The game that I went to see against Cleveland was not there at all, it just wasn't there. In the final two minutes, excuse me. In the final two minutes, they thought, oh yeah, we got this game in the bag. It's time to head to our locker room. It's time to go home. A great win. We won by double digits. Meanwhile, in a minute and 30, it's down to four. The lead's down to four. And it bugged the crap out of me. Because it's just like, guys, let's not get into habits again. At all. Let's not get into habits. Especially now in the season. Like, people say, yeah, I'd rather have this now than in the postseason, sure. But, 
Having bad habits is hard to get out of those bad habits. Trust me, we all have bad habits. Whether it's biting your nails or whatever. We all have bad habits. And it's hard to get away from those habits. So if those bad habits are happening now, close to the playoffs, it's not a good sign. My hand is hovering over the panic button in terms of the Celtics. So what's causing the Celtics to be like this? I'm going to tell you an example right now. I just saw this on the TV. Chucking up threes. And I'm not saying you're chuck they're chucking up three-pointers after a good ball movement. I'm talking about dribbling the ball, no ball movement, and just chucking them. And just absolutely chucking them from deep. And they're not getting the best shot. Recently, they have not been getting the best shot. Like, for example, let's go to the Houston Rockets game tonight. And let me show you. Let me show you what their shooting percentage is for tonight's game. It's not good, I'll tell you that much. The last time I checked, they were 9 for 32. Which is not good at all. Let's go take a look at what their stat is now in terms of the three-point line. Right now, the Celtics in this game from the three-point line is 12 for 41. Do you get the hint? Do you get the hint that it's not your night from deep? You're shooting 29% from the three-point range. Do you, uh, do you get it? Take the ball to the basket so you can get open shots. I feel like all night long as I've been watching, when they take it to the basket, they either get a foul, they go to the free throw line, or they have an open shot from the wing, from the top of the key, whatever. Nope, what they're doing is just dribbling the ball up the top of the key, dribbling to go nowhere, taking a step back, chuck up a three, and they absolutely brick it. That's bad habits. That's last year's Celtics before the run. That's last year's Celtics like in November, December, October. Why are we going back to this? Why are we going back to this now? It's just absolutely aggravating. That they think that they are the best team in basketball and they can just cakewalk through anybody. No, you can't do that. At the end of the day, the Houston Rockets are 15 and 52. You should not be losing to the goddamn Rockets. Why are you losing to them? Because you underestimated them. You just walked in thinking that you're going to have a cakewalk of a game, that it's an easy game, and there's going to be no problems whatsoever. So you think, yeah, easy win. Yeah, well, guess what? Now you're down nine with like seven minutes to go, something like that. 5-11, excuse me. You're down nine points with 5-11 left to go in the game. If they lose this game right here, I'm telling you right now, they are not making the first seed. And if they lose tonight, I officially hit the panic button. I officially hit it. My hand right now is, it was, I said it was hovering, but right now it's on. And I hate to do this to the Celtics. I gotta bring back this meme. I gotta bring that. I gotta bring that this meme. This is like. This is this is how my mind has been in terms of the Celtics as of recently. Really. Really. One of my viewers on the stream just said it, and uh, he's absolutely right. And honestly, I think I'm gonna end it on that note. There's just nothing left to say. I have nothing to say. Celtics need to get their act together. If they want to win the finals like we predicted them to do, stop it. Especially you, Grant Williams. Especially you. Liking a tweet also of somebody saying that they're cutting Christian Ward's minutes because they want to get give him the extension that they, they first offered to him. Let me read this tweet for you that Grant Williams liked. And I was angry with the fact that he liked this tweet. Especially with the way that they've been playing recently. 
I thought to myself, why are you speaking on this? Like, why are you talking about your contract and all that? No, you should be talking about how to get better, get your act together, and helping this team win a goddamn championship. He liked the tweet saying, Grant, do you think the Mavs are trying to tank Wood's value? So, he's basically forced to sign the extension. He liked that tweet. So, you know what that means? That's how he feels with the Celtics. Like, dude, you got your priorities warped. Like, you should be focusing on winning a championship. Like, what are we doing, Celtics? Every single one of them, as they chuck up another three and they absolutely brick it. Like, there's no energy. They just said it on the broadcast, too, as I was just thinking. Crazy. No energy. Hitting the panic button. And that's it. If they somehow win this game, I don't care. The panic button's still been hit. It's still been hit. So, I gotta end this Celtics segment because it's starting to give me a headache. And if I get a headache, I'm not gonna want to finish this podcast. So, we're gonna do the Patriots. We're on to the Patriots. And John New Smith is on the move from the Patriots to the Atlanta Falcons. Hey, go. Watch. Are you ready for some football? Alright, Bill, finally, finally I get to give you some praise a little bit. It's been a while since I've been able to give you a little bit of praise. But finally today, I get to give you a little bit of praise. So the previous stuff that you guys saw on this podcast, I recorded on Monday. I'm glad I waited, honestly, to do this podcast was because I knew that the free agency for the NFL was starting soon and I wanted to hold off to see what the Patriots would do right away. And honestly, some solid moves right off the gate for the Patriots. Now, you lost Devin McCourty because he is going to retire. That does stink at the end of the day because in terms of leadership, it's going to be really hard to replace that. But I want to give a thank you to Devin McCourty for all he's done for New England. And I want to give him a thank you for his time with the New England Patriots. Um, If you think of anybody who's a true New England Patriot, like... What defines a true Patriot? It's Devin McCourty. Devin McCourty's on that list for sure. Devin McCourty's on that list for sure. So I just want to give a thank you to Devin McCourty. We got an article on him dropping this weekend. I want to say either Saturday or Sunday that is going to drop on the website. So make sure you go check out the website for that. Now, let's go on to the free agent moves. So, let's just start off with a quick subtraction that the Patriots have made. That is Jacoby Myers. Now, people don't like this move. They say Jacoby Myers was was a good asset to the team, so on and so forth. He sure was. Um, last year with the New England Patriots was his first year, I would definitely say, that he went off for the most part. Six touchdowns, 67 receptions, 804 yards. On 96 targets. Played solid. He played solid for the most part. The only thing I will say about Jacoby Myers that I really didn't like was the fact that he turned the ball over to that Raiders game or whatever. Um, Didn't really like that. Kind of gave them the game, passing it right through them on that lateral. But at the end of the day, it is what it is now that he's gone. He's going to the Raiders, actually. I saw a tweet the other day. It said, Jacoby Myers is the first player in NFL history to help his team win before even being on that team. I thought that was hilarious for the most part. I thought that joke was hilarious. So, Jacoby Myers is gone. Jacoby Myers is gone. Also, I don't have a picture on here. I don't know why I don't have a picture. But Jonu Smith has been traded to the Atlanta Falcons for not much. I think it was a 7th round pick, something like that. Just to pretty much dump his salary. Which is a good thing because at the end of the day, Jonu Smith just didn't pan out for you. Jonu Smith did not fit with the way you wanted to play football. And getting rid of Jonu Smith opened up the door for many moves for the Patriots. It gives them a little bit of cap flexibility to do some stuff in free agency or in trades as well. 
So we'll see where the Patriots go from there. So one of the first things that the Patriots did was one of the first things that the Patriots did, and I was like, wow. Wow, wow, wow. They saw that Jacoby Myers was going to the Oakland Raiders, and who did they went and go get? They went out, and they went to go get one of my favorite players, honestly. One of my favorite players is because... Obviously, you can tell on the internet he's a fan favorite, and I think he's funny as heck. I subscribe to him on YouTube, and that is Juju Smith-Schuster. You know what Juju Smith-Schuster brings to the Patriots that not a lot of players have? Especially on the offensive side, he brings championship pedigree. Now, I know, I know, I know, he had a down year again last year. He had a down year again last year. I understand that. But at the end of the day, I've been saying that you need a number one. You need a number one wide receiver with Mac Jones to pair with Mac Jones. And I'm going to tell you something right now. He may not be the same like he used to be or whatever. But he's pretty damn close to a number one. He's the closest to a number one on your team right now, is what I'm trying to say. He is going to be a number two wide receiver for you at the end of the day. Last year, I will say this, he kind of returned to his old form a little bit. He only played nine games because he, I think he was out for part of the first half of the season, something like that. So, he only played nine games last year. He had three touchdowns, 933 yards. On 78 receptions and 101 targeted pass from Patrick Mahomes. He was targeted 101 times from Patrick Mahomes. He probably doesn't have that same explosive. That's what I mean when I say that he's not what he used to be. But he has shown signs that he can be a number one wide receiver. He was the best wide receiver, in my opinion, on the market. And at the end of the day, is he an upgrade over Jacoby Myers? Yes, he is an upgrade over Jacoby Myers. I don't care what you Patriots fans say. I know people want to take their pants off of Jacoby Myers because, oh, he was a born Patriot. He was born here with the New England Patriots. He was drafted by this team, so on and so forth. I understand the fact that Jacoby Myers is a fan favorite here, but at the end of the day, is Juju Smith-Schuster, an upgrade over Jacoby Myers? And the answer is yes. The answer is yes, hands down, every, almost every single time. The thing that I questioned, though, was he played nine games last year and he got the same contract as Jacoby Myers. So that's the only thing I will question at the end of the day. The only thing that's different between Damon, um, excuse me, the only thing that's the difference between Jacoby Myers and Juju Smith-Schuster is that Jacoby Myers is guaranteed and Juju Smith-Schuster is earned. I'm assuming it's earned because of his injury history recently. So that's why it's earned. So they're kind of being precautious in that. So at the end of the day, that's probably that's what that is. But I like the move. I like the move. It's an upgrade over what you had before. Juju Smith-Schuster, a New England Patriot. Welcome to the New England Patriots, Juju Smith-Schuster. I honestly might have to get a Juju Smith-Schuster jersey. He's one of my fa favorites. He's one of my favorites. And I don't think the Patriots are done in terms of getting wide receivers. I don't know why I feel that way. I just feel like they're not done. Because they have been in names on DeAndre Hopkins, um, Judy of the Broncos. They've had discussions with Odell Beckham Jr. I don't think they're done with the wide receiving core yet. At the end of the day, I would still like to get see them get... I still would like to see them get a true number one wide receiver. I would like to see that. No shots at Juju Smith-Schuster, but... In recent years, like, for example, the last couple of years, he just hasn't been that. In 2020, he showed that he could be a number one. So, I would hope maybe at some point he could get back to that form... I don't know, but let's see what happens with Juju. He can be a number one. 
it just really depends on how he feels and it, what he pretty much does on the field. Is he still the guy like he used to be? Can he be the same guy like he used to be? Or is he going to be a lesser version of himself and more of like a number two or maybe a number three? Don't know. Could not tell you to be honest with you. So that is the signing of Juju Smith-Schuster. And then the second move that the Patriots have made so far is they got James Robinson, who played for the Jets, I believe, last year. He played for the Jets and the Jaguars last year. Played for the Jets and the Jaguars last year. He had three touchdowns on 425 yards. And he had a total of 110 rushing attempts. First down rushes, he had a total of 22 first down rushes last year. So, when I saw that they got this guy, when I saw that they got James Robinson, I thought to myself, this. Well, there's a replacement for Damian Harris. Damian Harris is gone. Damian Harris hasn't been confirmed gone yet, but if you were to ask me, that's what I think is going to happen. And how do I feel about that? So, last year, James Robinson played 11 games. How many did... Okay, Damian Harris played 11 games also. So, kind of a fair sampling there. Both 11 games. Damian Harris had a little bit better yards than James Robinson. But the one thing that I notice in terms of James Robinson versus Damian Harris... James Robinson is 24 years old at this current moment. He's turning 25 this year in August. Damian Harris just turned 26 February 11th. So James Robinson is a year and a half, two years younger than Damian Harris. What does that mean? That means there's still some room for him to grow. Kind of alarming with the fact that teams are already willing to give up on him. Like the Jacksonville Jaguars are willing to give up on him. The Jets are willing to give up on him already. It's kind of alarming there in my opinion. But at the end of the day, it don't really matter if he is producing on the field for the Patriots. At the end of the day. And the contract's good. The contract's good for James Robinson. So it's low risk, high reward for James Robinson. It's a two year deal too. I kind of like that also. Because he will have two years to prove himself. The fact that last year he was injured for six games. And he'll have a chance to prove himself here with the New England Patriots. He will be that second running back. And this and this signing here also, and letting Damian Harris go, solidifies Ramondre Stevenson as your number one running back. Which I love, which I love because he balled out last year. He was your best offensive weapon last season. So I like that a lot. And then the Patriots made another minor move. They got another. They got some offensive line help. The Patriots signed Calvin Anderson to a two-year deal. Um, he's an offensive tackle. So I like the move there. Giving Mac Jones a little bit more help at the end of the day. In protection. Because last year he just didn't have it at all. I like the move. I think he, I want to say he's somewhat young. He's somewhat young for the most part. I can get that information for you right now. Yeah, he's 26 I'm seeing here. Yeah, he's 26 years old. 27, excuse me. He's 27 years old. My fault. He's 27 years old. I like the move. It gives Mac Jones some protection up front. Uh, I would like to see them get a few more offensive linemen. I'd like to see them boost that defense a little bit because you did lose it at the end of the day with Devin McCourty. I would like to see him maybe sign a safety or a cornerback, something like that. I would like to see that. And I also would like to see them actually go out and get a number one wideout. Maybe you'd use your draft picks for the offensive line, maybe. So, we'll see what they do in terms of that. Maybe you don't have to sign offensive linemen, but I would say you'd have to draft them if you... But you need them either way. 
And then in terms of your number one wide receiver, I would like to see a trade. I would love to see a trade for a number one wide receiver. And I've been having some debates in my group chat on wide receiver ones that the Patriots are in or whatnot. I understand that um, Judy is 23 or 24 years old on the Broncos, and he can be a number one. I'm not saying I don't dislike the player at all. I'm not saying that at all. But what I'm saying is, right now, I want a guy who is a proven number one wide receiver. I want somebody who is a proven number one. That's what I mean by, oh, I'd rather see them go for D-Hop or whatever, because he's proven to be a number one wide receiver. Yeah, people are going to say that Judy's on the Broncos right now, so they're kind of holding him back. But at the end of the day, is he a number one yet? No, he is not. Can he be a number one wideout? Absolutely, he can be a number one wideout. And the reasoning why I'm saying to my group chat, like, hey, I would rather have D-Hop over Judy is because D-Hop is a proven number one wide receiver. He's proven. They said that Judy can be a number one wide receiver, but honestly, we could say that about some wide receivers on the Patriots right now. We can say that about some wide receivers on the Patriots right now. Juju Smith-Schuster, Kendrick Bourne, Tyquan Thornton. Those three names right off the bat just came off my head there. You can say are that you can say that can they can be a number one wide receiver. They can be, but are they? They're not. They're not at the end of the day. So I want that number one wide receiver that can solidify that core. And after that, I think that's really it. So Pages got a long segment today. Pages got a long segment today. So we are gonna go over some questions that you guys in the chat have had. I had some notes here from the last time I did a live stream. I remember some of the questions that some people asked. So we're gonna answer those questions in the final segment here on episode 23 of the Beantown Takes podcast. Alright, so as we wrap up this podcast here, we covered three teams today. We covered the Celtics, Bruins, and the Patriots. We covered all three of those teams. We left the Red Sox out because there's really nothing to cover on them right now. The only thing I will say about the Red Sox is that they named Corey Kluber their opening day starter. And people are already putting the, pulling their pants off for the Red Sox because they have such a winning record in spring training. I saw a video the other day of Jason Dominguez hitting a home run versus the Red Sox for the Yankees spring training. And I saw a Red Sox fan commented saying, what's the score though? Like really? That's where you guys are at celebrating spring training games? Dude, get out of here, dude. My player would never celebrate a spring training game. So now we're on to your questions. We were live when I was first starting to record, but the Celtics lost to the Houston Rockets that night. So I was done recording after that. I was like, all right, I'm done talking about sports for the night. I'm going to play some until dawn, which you, if you aren't go- coming on the streams or whatever, which you are, if you aren't coming on the streams, make sure you tune into the streams. We cover post game coverage from Boston sports teams every night for the most part as of recently because we've been getting so many people coming on the live stream and you guys have enjoyed it so I've been staying up late for you guys covering the Boston teams like the games post games so on and so forth you guys love them so make sure you guys tune into the streams now we're going to answer some of you guys questions I do have them on my phone here I do have them on my phone so I am going to read a few questions that you guys have asked so this question was coming from vyom he is in my streams all the time shout out to him he's a mod in my stream also where did you get the bean town takes logo it looks fantastic all right if you guys didn't catch the beginning of this video also we have a new logo for bean town takes we have a new logo for bean town takes it was time for a new one because at the end of the day you guys know i am going to career fair at fenway for like Maybe getting a job at 95 The Sports Hub, WEI, NBC Sports Boston, or whomever. You know what I mean. So, had to make a new logo for the website. And I've wanted to do it for a little bit now also. And if you guys have followed me on Instagram, I was asking people for like graphic designs for logos and all that. And if they did them, they should DM me. 
And I did get a DM from somebody saying that they can do that. This is what came out for the logo. And it came out fantastic. It came out phenomenal. I absolutely love the logo. But I'm going to give them a shout out right now. I gave them a shout out at the beginning of the video as well. Shout out to Nikki Ross 317 is her Instagram. Her name is Nikki Ross. I actually know her personally. Uh, her and I have been good friends for a long time. And she was the one that did the logo for me. She also made a Instagram for her graphic designing as well. I'm going to plug that in here also. Her Instagram name for her graphic design is outlet underscore n dot r. So make sure you go check out those two accounts. I will leave their Instagrams in the description down below as well. Go check them out. If you need anything for graphic designing, like a logo for your social media, website, a graphic design for school maybe, or anything like that, go hit her up. Tell her I sent you here. And she does phenomenal work. Shout out to Nikki. She did a fantastic job on the logo. The second question that I received was from Unger to the Max. What team do you fear in the Stanley Cup playoff the most? The team that I fear in the Stanley Cup playoff the most, there are two teams, really. That is the Hurricanes, because they beat us last year. They took us to seven games. When we were one of the worst seeds in recent memory. So that's not something to be bright about. I mean... We were one of the worst seeds last year, and we took, what was they, the second seed or something like that, to seven games, which, that's a bright spot right there, but in terms of teams that I fear the most, that is the Hurricanes and the New York Rangers. After those teams, not really worried about them. If you want to argue with me that the Devils had a good season, sure, but I think they're just too inexperienced for us. Tampa Bay has struggled most for most of the year this year. They are on a bad slump right now also, so I don't really fear them as much. But those are my two teams that I will say that I fear the most in terms of the Bruins. I don't fear the Maple Leafs at all. We are the Maple Leafs dads, so I don't I don't fear the Maple Leafs whatsoever. I don't really fear the Lightning. They could maybe turn it around, but who knows? But yeah, that's really it there. Those are the only two questions that I really have. Last thing I will add also, the last thing I will add also, is that the Celtics do need to play a little bit better in terms of ball movement. Somebody did ask me the other night also, I forget who his name was, but they asked what do the Celtics need to improve to get back on their run like they were at the beginning of the season. It's just simply the ball movement. Ball movement, driving to the paint more, creating contact, and creating the right shot instead of forcing up threes. They've been drifting away from the ball movement and all that. And because of that, they have either lost leads or they just get behind to where they can't catch up. And one thing that has been happening also that I will add on to that as well is that the Celtics underestimate opponents like how are we losing to the Houston Rockets how are we lose winning by only two points to a Minnesota Timberwolves team without Carl Anthony Towns couldn't really tell you at the end of the day but they need to get their act together or else their playoff run is going to be short their playoff run is going to be short and you guys haven't been hearing me talk like this for a long time in terms of the Boston Celtics but it is what it is you just got to say how it is Thank you guys for watching this podcast. Leave a thumbs up if you guys enjoyed these videos. Subscribe now if you guys are new. You guys know what to do. Go check out our website. Links in the description down below. Go check out Nikki Ross and Outlet underscore NR for graphic designing stuff. Their Instagrams are also in the description down below. It's been your boy Jesse, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Later, guys. <laughs>